today we are discussing the developments that have been taking place in Pakistan of late. We see that there is a no confidence motion being moved against Prime Minister Imran Khan. And we also have reports coming out of Pakistan that the Pakistan military, which is the strongest institution in the country, also seems to have withdrawn its support to the Prime Minister. Ambassador Prakash, when you see what is unfolding in Pakistan, how do you look at the general stability, instability that will fall out with what we are seeing in Pakistan today? Uh, greetings and nice to talk to you. I think from all accounts, Prime Minister Imran Khan is living on borrowed time. His mistake was that he started believing or behaving like an elected prime minister, whereas the fact is that he is and was a selected prime minister. He took on the, committed the cardinal mistake of taking on the army. In Pakistan, we all know that the de facto power rests with the army and you cannot mess with them. And the opposition has united. Granted that the unity is ephemeral and it is basically to dethrone Imran Khan. But at the moment, all opposition parties have united and uh, there is tremendous pressure. Prime Minister Imran Khan has uh, not really distinguished himself as an administrator. He has been erratic. We know that from all media reports that there has been rampant corruption. The economy is in shambles. The inflation is high. And uh, there have been various, various acts of omission and commission. So it would appear that unless a miracle happens, the days of Prime Minister Imran Khan are numbered. Ambassador Prakash, how do you think this affects the region, especially India? And of course, we have Afghanistan where Pakistan exerts a lot of influence. Do you think that this political instability in Pakistan will also affect the political, what we see the atmosphere in Afghanistan? And to a lesser extent, it also makes India watch the situation more closely, not only in Pakistan, but in the region also. When has Pakistan been stable? Pakistan has always been unstable. And when there have had uh, periods of stability under the army, the direct control of the army, the army has followed generally an approach which has not been conducive to peace and stability and uh, friendly relations with India. Barring some uh, periods, uh, I mean, you have been following, I know Pakistan very closely, I don't want to get into that. But we all know that every effort that India made to find a modus vivendi with Pakistan resulted in a terror incident and was rebuffed basically by the armed forces. That said, I guess we have factored in that instability, the relationship at the moment between India and Pakistan is not the best to say the least. Fortunately, uh, there is ceasefire at the border and which is holding. It is a positive sign. Uh, there is daylight between Pakistan, especially the civilian government and uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan. Pakistan certainly helped Taliban to come to power, especially the dreaded Haqqani group. But what have they delivered? Haqqani group or the ruling establishment in Afghanistan needs financial assistance, needs recognition. Nothing is forthcoming and Pakistan does not have the ability. Already there are serious differences cropping up between Taliban and Afghanistan. So I do not think uh, that it will make much of a difference because the relation we have factored in all these dislocations and uh, the difficulties, uh, the political instability that Pakistan has been facing. Maybe there will be an unstable period in Pakistan, but well, that is of their own making. Mr. Prakash, if we were to specifically talk about Pakistan's relationship in the region, and we have seen them getting very close to China, for instance, and um, to some extent where we have also said that Pakistan today is more like a satellite country to China rather than being wholly independent. Do you feel somewhere that the political events that take place in Pakistan are also watched today by bigger powers like China because they have stake there, they have investments there. And for example, countries like the US. So how do you see the global community reacting also given the fact that Pakistan has nuclear weapons? So it makes the situation a little more tricky that you have a country which has nuclear weapons and it is going through this phase where the army is, of course, all powerful, but at least they had some appearance of a democracy which also seems to be falling away now. If they had, as you, I think you characterize it very well, appearance of democracy, it has been generally a veneer of democracy. And even when there, there has been a so-called civilian government, 
the effective levers of power have been with the army because it is well known that on issues or subjects like india usa saudi arabia china the nuclear button security and defense matters army has a veto and the army has the control and the army is an all powerful army which has basically a law unto itself the relationship between pakistan and china is very well known you know the problem basically is that in the quest for having or having a resort the ethr to have a preeminent position that is the army you know they have always created a demon or they have demonized india they have cooked up a threat perception from india and in the bargain they have caused up they earlier had were causing up to the us and now to china and the way the pakistani assets have been handed over or being handed over whether there is gawadar port or tracts of land is very well known so we can call them a satellite we can call them a junior partner but basically they uh, have decided to do the bidding of china and they are paying the price for that because already about 40 billion dollars seem to be have been invested by china uh, in china pakistan economic corridor where does pakistan have the ability to pay back they have been borrowing from saudi arabia paying to china borrowing from china paying to imf and they have been paying the price for that because they have burnt their bridges with the us they have the relationship with saudi arabia has been affected but when you are a terror state when you have been cutting the nose to spite the face Uh, that is what is going to happen and the problem is that the pakistani economy and the polity is in a free fall only they can prevent that but whether they will prevent it is a million dollar question ambassador prakash do you think that the india pakistan relation is unlikely to change we remember the time when imran khan became prime minister and those initial uh, weeks one thought that maybe this relationship could get a little better could be a little more positive but uh, we we seen that pakistan's state policy of sponsoring cross border terrorism has continued there has really been no change are you optimistic going forward that maybe if we have a change we have a different leader there things might change or do you think it would be foolish to be optimistic i think it is always wise to be optimistic but one has also to be realistic because i always maintain that you cannot get bogged down by history history cannot weigh you down yet it is immature to ignore history and uh, what i had alluded to is that a what is the identity of pakistan from day one they have consciously created an identity of not india so you have tried to distance yourself from india you have tried to create an islamic identity you have become an islamic state you thought that islam will be the glue to hold your country together that never happened in 71 they separated provinces are at war with each other practically baluchistan and khyber pakhtunkhwa have insurgencies going on and pakistan will not desist with, despite the fact that as hillary clinton said that if you raise snakes in your backyard they are going to sting you uh, they are paying the price of uh, nurturing terror groups but well that is their policy and as i alluded to the fact that pakistani army to maintain the preeminent position needs an enemy otherwise how can they justify this kind of an exalted existence so they are caught in their own web they from time to time talk of peace but do the opposite i would love to be optimistic but i am afraid that the unless there is a himalayan shift in the approach a tectonic shift which is unlikely i do not see much of a possibility of finding a modus vivendi between india and pakistan i think we are destined to live as in contention i hope that it does not flare up into something more but to expect a kind of stable ties looks difficult mr prakash we also see that on friday the pakistan lower house will take up the no confidence motion and the fate of imran khan will be decided how do you look at both the options if he survives or if he fails do you feel that that has an impact on how we look at pakistan or do you think it's something which either way for india it's more or less the same situation we are dealing with let us see over the decades whichever government has come to power in pakistan i'm not talking the army but the civilian government before coming to power they said the while in opposition they have all said the right things when in power there is a change of tune or tone even nawaz sharif who is said to be a business friendly prime minister 
you know, when Prime Minister Vajpayee went for the Lahore Yatra, we got Kargil. So I think there is this track record. We have not seen much of effort or success. I would say that even if the civilian governments wanted to because of the army. In any case, whether he survives or does not survive, I think uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's authority will diminish further. His hold, in any case, is tenuous, will become further tenuous. I think he has burnt his bridges with the army and that will cost him dearly. The opposition parties have tasted blood. They are going to go for the jugular. So, and therefore I said that whether it is the coming Friday or later, Mr. Imran Khan's days seem to be unnumbered. But as far as the Pakistani policies is concerned, it's going to be business as usual in all likelihood, unless a miracle happens. Ambassador Prakash, would it be fair to extend this analysis to Afghanistan also? Should we broadly say that despite what we are seeing internally in Pakistan, the policy towards Afghanistan and also a lot of uh, us are worried that the, the hold that ISI and the Pakistan army essentially has over Afghanistan will stay despite the change of face in the leadership. So are we going to see the same hold or do you think there might be a shift in the Afghan thing also? No, because the Afghan file, Afghan policy is run not by the civilian government, but by the army. Haqqani group is a creation or at least have been protected by the ISI. ISI has nurtured the Taliban while they were out of power. They have nursed them back to health. They have armed them. They have kind of given them legitimacy. So that policy is not likely to change. But uh, the only difference now is that even Taliban is disillusioned with Pakistan and the ISI because they have not been able to deliver. Taliban has been in power since August uh, last year, but not a single country has recognized them. They are economically in a bad state and they are going to assert. They know that Pakistan can play both sides. And I think that there could be difficulties even for Pakistan, while they could be because of the experience that uh, the Taliban has had of being ostracized by the world, literally. Uh, whether it will have a sobering effect on them, I do not know. But Pakistan, Afghan relations are going to develop some cracks. That uh, is quite likely. And in the coming days, we will follow the developments undertaking in Pakistan. And we will also continue our discussion and analysis of how it affects the region. With these comments, we bring today's discussion to an end. Thank you. Thank you very much. 